Your Eminence, Bishop William, distinguished ecclesial and civic leaders, brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, it is an honor to greet you, Bishop, at your Episcopal ordination and to welcome you as Bishop of Maitland, Newcastle, on behalf of the churches of Newcastle, the Hunter and the Manning. Bishop, uh, this is a region of strong and affectionate ecumenical relationships, both at the level of uh, church leadership, but also at the level of the parishes. The Triadiocesan Covenant, signed by the Catholic Diocese of Maitland, Newcastle, Broken Bay, and the Anglican Diocese of Newcastle, is, I think, the epitome of these warm ecumenical relationships. Recently, I had the privilege of being a guest at the First Synod in the Diocese of Broken Bay. And in your first year as Bishop of Maitland, Newcastle, I will invite you to be present for the Diocese of Newcastle's 50th Synod in Maitland, your former sea city. Bishop, I was uh, very encouraged by the warmth of your response to my letter, uh, congratulating you on your appointment by Pope Benedict as Bishop of Maitland, Newcastle. Uh, you would be aware, of course, of the quality of the relationship that church leaders have, enjoy have enjoyed with um, your predecessor, Bishop Michael Malone. <laughs> it was enjoyment, not endurance. <laughs> and, and I hasten to add that the obvious uh, ecclesial affection between the two bishops in Newcastle, which is quite historic, has counted for much in the life of the city of Newcastle, especially in the times of trauma that the city has endured. Bishop, you have served faithfully as a parish priest, and doubtless you know the demands of leadership. Leadership as a bishop is a huge privilege, but it is costly. That's why the Cardinal prayed for courage for you. And those wonderful greetings and gifts that the local elders of the tribes uh, gave to you as you entered the cathedral are so significant. It's costly now because of the issues we've inherited in our churches, the need to recover community trust, and the need to be missional as a church, a great change for a church that has normally been so pastoral. As you deal with these issues, you will have your fair share of critics, and I hope that we can share them out together. <laughs> Uh, leadership is now costly because we live in a blaming culture. There's a national tendency to assume that if you can blame someone, then you've obviously solved the issue. Somehow we leaders have to model and assist others to assume responsibility rather than duck responsibility. Bishop William, I can assure you that you'll be embraced by the people of your diocese and by the communities throughout the diocese. Novocastrians are large-hearted people. They will give you a go, and they value a fair deal. They will stand by you because they embody the Australian fair-go mentality, and they will pray for you. And I can assure you what an extraordinary privilege it is to be prayed for. So welcome, Bishop William. We greet you with respect, affection, and expectation.